Good morning and welcome to the Elevate Renatus team call. This is your host, Keely Austin. Today is Takeoff Tuesday. It's June 30th. I'm honored to be your host today. We've got a phenomenal trainer with us. Bill Pradabon is someone who I've, who I've been very fortunate to get to know over the last four years. We both work in Scottsdale Renatus. And Bill has been doing Renatus for quite a while. He was actually a part of the previous company and I believe he took a few years off in between, but he has really, really taken this education and this program and made some amazing things happen with it and has completely turned his life around. Before Renatus, Bill, Bill was a pro skier in Vail, Colorado, and he realized that he was not qualified to do much else. He was doing that for 10 years. And he got into franchise. He bought a couple of stores, owned a few stores, and due to lack of knowledge, he actually ended up losing everything. He heard about real estate investing and in 2008, he attempted to um, do to 2007, excuse me, he heard, he heard about real estate investing and wanted to attempt it on his own, didn't get education. And because of the 2008 crash, Bill ended up in over $400,000 of debt. So after that was when he found Renatus. And it's, again, really incredible what Bill has been able to do when he has applied the information, the knowledge that he has learned from our, our educational system. It's really incredible. He has earned himself multiple seven figures from his real estate transactions and has completed over 150 transactions in multiple states in the US. He's got a nice mixture of short-term rentals, long-term rentals. He's done tons of flips. And uh, we're very, very fortunate to get to learn from Bill Pradabon. Also on the marketing side, he has uh, become a part of the PIT team, which is the President's Advisory Council in training. So that's a big deal. And we're just very fortunate to get to learn from someone like Bill. Good morning, Bill. There we go. Good morning. How are we doing? How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm better. Good. <laughs> I'm hopefully on that. <laughs> I'm hopefully over COVID. <laughs> Folks been a little sick the last two weeks. It's been uh, kicking my butt, but uh, I'm good this morning. I'm excited to be here. I really appreciate all you do. I'll tell you, um, I'm trying to think. So, you know me, I always get on everybody else's calls. Thursday I was on the call and Monday um, this week, I just, uh, we, we got a, uh, I got a cool training this morning, but uh, we came out to California Monday. I just was tired and uh, and uh, ended up not getting on the call. And uh, so I just want to say thanks for all you do and always being here and getting this call started, no matter who gets on the call. And, you know, everybody has that opportunity to miss every once in a while, but you are consistent and always here kicking it off for us. So we just really appreciate all you, all the work you do. And, uh, and this call wouldn't happen without you. So thanks, Keel Beals. Awesome. It's a pleasure. Right on. Hi, everybody. I'm going to type in my cell phone, 760-533-3141. Can you hear me okay, Keely? Yes, you sound good. Perfect. So I'm pretty excited about this morning because I am in Southern California, um, which I thought I would have been last week. I waited, a, a, we waited we were gonna, we actually were gonna come out Monday or Tuesday of last week. And then uh, I was still feeling terrible. And um, we waited and waited and then I thought I felt pretty good on Thursday and then we decided to come out Friday and the drive and uh, I don't know, just, I relapsed a little bit if you wanna call it that. It just killed me. I was down bad on Saturday and Sunday and finally felt pretty good Monday um, and today. And I guess Sunday afternoon, I felt really good. So I think I've been COVID free for like two days. This will be my third day. But, uh, but yeah, we're out here in California. And we're staying at our, our Airbnb in California, uh, which is um, off of Via de Valle in San Diego, which is uh, the town called Solana Beach. And um, I was thinking about this yesterday. I was like, I'm going to train. And I want to share something. Um, so remember, my number is 760-533-3141. Thank you, Hilda. You guys are awesome, David. Um, if you guys have thoughts, comments, or questions, and you will have something specific that you want to interrupt me with and talk about, you know me, uh, please, uh, even if you don't know me, um, you can interrupt. 
there, this is about you and you know everybody on this call you know has an agenda when we train and stuff like that of course and we want to bring you value and and make sure that we get our points across that we feel are are really pertinent to your training and to your success and things like that but but of course anytime we can collaborate and work together and mastermind about something that's going on in your world with your business we want to be able to attack that as well but um uh, so just feel free to interrupt, but I'll, I'll tell you a little journey. Number one is um, you don't need this is understand that your business has a purpose and it has a meaning. And, and I, I want to think about this. So you don't have to quit your job um, right away. You don't, or, or ever for that matter, you don't have to um, worry about this being a full-time position. You don't have to worry about anything when it comes to, feeling any pressure um, you, you what you do have to know about in my opinion is whatever it is and it's the hardest part is is that like diet like lifestyle of any kind the gym sports um, your children's affairs um, you have to fit them in right so you have to fit this in you can't you can't put it off for weeks at a time um, it will never get any traction um, so it has to become something you do on a, on a daily and, you know, and weekly basis. And each day there's just needs to be small progresses. Okay. And, um, those small progresses lead to larger things down the road. And like anything that you begin to turn into a habit, um, and I, I know that you guys know this, so I'm not, it's nothing new. It's just a reminder uh, because I'm being reminded of why I do this. I'm being reminded of why I do this because I'm out here in California and I'm going to tell the story of this property and it's pretty cool. Um, and I'm going to tell to you on how it relates to the marketing and how it relates to Renatus and everything you're about, everything that you're doing here on a Tuesday morning at 7 a.m., Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or Thursday, listening to us and deciding to take this hour in the morning um, you know, this morning at 6.30 when my alarm went off, I typically walk my dogs in Phoenix before, but my routine's a little bit more. Right now, I'm pretty tired. <laughs> I'll tell you, it went off. I was like, damn it, 6.30 already. And uh, so you guys, you know, you got up early to do this. And so let's make it worthwhile, right? So anytime you develop a habit of any kind, um, you know, it, it, it has to take place each day or, you know, for a certain number of days in a row, 21 or whatever they say. Right. And then, and then like a lot of things, sometimes like if you're on a diet and your body starts to change form a little bit, um, you start to notice it, you look at it and you're like, ah, not so bad. Ah, look at that. I can, I can see through right there, you know, whatever, whatever it is. Right. And you're like, ah, I kind of like that. So you're like, maybe I'll, maybe I'll, uh, you know, won't, I'll go another day without dessert or another day without alcohol or something. Right because we know those are just some sugar sugar things that contribute to the extras, right? Or maybe we go to the gym and we feel good. You know, we come back home and we're like, ah, felt pretty good, right? And then we all know that it's pretty easy to break habits too. Like um, a lot easier to break the habit than develop the habit. But one of the things that we find out when we, um, when we work on things is that as we begin to enjoy them and appreciate them more and they have more value, then we spend more time on them and we the day hasn't gotten any longer. Um, your all of your choices of things that you normally do don't change, right? They're all still there, but they're not all going to fit in the day. Um, you know, you can't you can't get the same amount of sleep that you need if you're trying to fit in two hours of webinars. You know, on, on Monday uh, for the founders webinar and this call in the morning, and then and then doing a call uh, on Monday night. You've got a it's three hours of your day that you've got to adjust. You, you either might not be able to go to a child's event. Um, you might not be able to watch a TV show. Uh, you might not be able to um, relax or spend an extra hour at work, um, whatever the case is. Um, you know, and those are hard sacrifices in the beginning because the, the, the result of that new change doesn't outweigh the result of staying at work for an extra hour uh, with your boss or whatever the case is. And you guys get what I'm saying. But, um, but over time, um, this will pay off. Um, and for some of us, it's, it's a, you know, a relatively short period of time, maybe six months, a year, 10 months for, for a lot of people here, John O'Neill's story and Michael Hoggins, 10 months in their first deal was done. 
Uh, Michael was able to quit his job. <clears throat> John O'Neill was able to pay back his credit cards and do his first deal. And, and there's thousands of stories like that. But uh, maybe it's two years, maybe it's three years, whatever it is that uh, before you see the result you want. But, um, but uh, it's a relatively short period of time and things start to kick in. So things start to uh, take shape for what you want them worth. Um, now, they remember it's a consistent thing and, and it's a habit you, you want to form. And I'm talking about both the business and the real estate. I'm talking about, you know, studying your education, um, right? And then, and then talking to people, um, simply just talking to people, making a list. They might not show up. You might not do any major advertising. You might not um, be some guru on Facebook. You might not um, have some crazy helio system of lead generation and drip systems and, and all of that stuff. That's fine. But you may just want to make a list. Keep it to yourself. Whether you're five-star or not, you, you know, for whatever reason, are too scared to touch your list, and I get it. But you make this list and you carry it around with you. And eventually you talk to people. And eventually you, you know, we're, we're out in the real world and, and, and this is where the story starts. Um, I would love to quit my job, Mr. Bill. All right, well, then you're going to take what we're learning today, you guys, and you're going to add it. You're going to add it in at a more consistent basis and you're going to add it in in a more massive action. And I'm going to share with you what's going on. So, you know, when I got started, um, when I got started, you guys, so I, I didn't quit my job necessarily. I didn't really have a job. I had a business, right? I was kind of an, a 1099. So I was, in 2006, I was a loan officer. That was my first job out of Flating and Sports, where I was still owner of the store that we had. We had two stores left uh, as things were crumbling around us in California. And I moved back, I moved out to Arizona. Um, and and I <laughs> got a job as a loan officer. And my wife was like, I was like, can you believe I got the job? I've never, you know, I had an interview. I was like, what the heck was an interview? And uh, my wife's like, Bill, they give that job to anybody. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> it's pretty funny. All right. So, so I get this job and, um, and then I was like, like trying to, I was doing okay right away. It was early 06. And then, and then like by mid to late 06, you know, well, banks were closing. There was like 14, 1,300 plus banks in 06. I don't know if you guys know this. By, by 07, there was less than 700 banks. And by, by the crash, by October 2007 and into 08, there was less than 600 banks. They had all folded. The economy was so bad. And, um, and uh, so as these banks were closing, my loans weren't closing. Uh, you know, appraisals weren't coming. It was crazy. So I was like, well, I'm 1099. Uh, exactly. Thanks, Sue. Um, and, uh, and, uh, I'm like, well, I might as well get my, my real estate license too, to help me with real estate. And then I remember, um, I remember trying to do, sh trying to do loan modifications. And, and then I remember trying to do loans for people and, and, the, and there was no equity in the houses and I couldn't qualify anybody. And I'm like, I was busting my butt to, um, to make these things happen. And what I, what I found out was that I was putting in all this effort and the odds of it getting done were very low. And when I found Renatus and I started studying the education right at the end of 07, I was like, well, I might as well just, if I'm going to make a hundred percent commission, why not make a hundred percent commission of my own hundred percent? Like, why not? Why give it to, why, why work hard in the loan officer position where I got to split the commission? I got to split the commission with my broker and my real estate. Why don't I forget all that stuff and just go hundred percent, try to do short sales and try to try to go after leads this way. So that's, that's, that's kind of how I, I was able to go full time in this, but, um, but I don't recommend not having an income. You guys, you've heard me say this when you, when you do this and I know you want to quit your job. So you just have to take massive action. So I took massive action. You guys, I, I, I didn't work on one short sale. Um, I worked on, I worked on a hundred and, and it took seven months to close one of them. Um, I will tell you, I did a short sale in six days, uh, start to finish from when I got the contract to when the bank approved my, uh, approved my short sale six days, but generally speaking, they took several months. Um, but I also started marketing, uh, and you guys know this, I'm not, I'm not, that's not where the story is going today in the training, but 
when you want to quit your job, um, you know, when you want to change your financial life, um, then whatever little habits you do, like the meetings, like these Zooms, um, you have to, in my opinion, you have to commit 100% um, to every meeting, and then you have to commit to the education 100%. Remember, when I watched education, you guys, it was live, right? And I watched the short sales class five times. That's a two-day class. I watched it five times. Um, so I, I mastered it. Um, and, and I threw other classes in there, but I didn't try doing real estate owned by the bank. My first 12, 15 months, I didn't raise private money. I didn't do any fix and flips. I didn't do any wholesales. I focused on short sales. That was the only strategy for my buy and sell. So I was very specific as to what I wanted to do. Um, so you may want to determine what it is you want to do and focus. You will easily get distracted in real estate and chase different, different opportunities. And you, you could become, it's not impossible, but you could become, um, you know, a master of none. And then it's, and then the money's not there as fast as you need it. So, um, as you begin to do this journey and, or you pick it back up or you figure out where we're at. And this is again, why we're doing this, right? I'm in a, I'm in a place right now that is a two bedroom, two bath townhouse in Solana beach. It's less than a mile from the beach. It's nothing great. Uh, but property in, in California is not easy to come by. Um, the same property, you know, right close to the beach is, is, is about a million dollars, right? For a, a not that fixed up um, two bedroom, two bath uh, overlooking the ocean. Um, HOAs there are between four and really between five and $700 a month uh, for some of those HOA, most of those HOAs with, because they have little pools and common areas and they're over the cliffs and stuff like that, very expensive, gated. And so um, I'm gonna take you through this journey a little bit and, and what, why we do Renatus. Um, I met somebody in 2009 and his name was Kevin and I met him at a Bob Snyder event. Um, and it was a big event after a college back then you guys, so you don't, it was live only. So Bob has enhanced the education by, by moving it entirely online, digital, recorded. The value of our education today is, is as if it's almost like cassette or eight track tapes or or even CDs versus MP3. It's, it's so far advanced today than it was when we went there, when I started, right? And the program was two years. And, um, and uh, I went, I wasn't a marketer, but I went to a marketing event. I didn't really even know it. It was just what everybody was doing. And why would I not go? I'm like, I'm committed to this, to this thing called Renatus. I was, or, you know, the old company and I was, I, I needed to be whatever events they were happening. And I went by myself. I didn't know anybody. And there was 150 plus people in the room. And we were at a hotel. We had to drive from, we had to drive from the, from the hotel where the classes were all the way over to Scottsdale. It was at least, at least a 45 minute drive through traffic. And I couldn't go home, see my wife, get food, nothing. Cause I, I wouldn't have made it in time. And I had to drive on Thursday night. So I didn't take a Thursday night class. Instead, I went to this meeting. And I sit down next to this guy named Kevin. And he's from Chicago. And he's, he's ha half my age. He's, he's 10 years younger than me, uh, half my age. But he's just a young buck. He just graduated ASU. And he's got a full combo holder at Nubo, at the old company. I sit next to him. We start talking. <clears throat> and I'm like, yeah, I'm working on short sales. This is like mid to late 08 and I had I closed a couple short sales and I was telling him about that and he was telling me what he was doing he's like yeah you know my buddy and I are getting a bid service going down at the auction the auctions are picking up I was like oh I'd buy a house at auction you know whatever we should you know exchange numbers um and and that that day that meeting you guys changed my life forever um Kevin Kevin Langan is is one of my best friends I went to his wedding I was in his wedding um I played golf with his seven brothers and his dad and I are friends. We bought a 10 bedroom apartment complex together. Um, 10 bedroom assisted, uh, well, we, we have it as a group home, uh, downtown Phoenix. I bought it from the bank for $66,000. Uh, 
2009, 3,600 square foot single family home in Phoenix, Arizona for 66,000 bucks in 2009 from Chase Bank. Um, Kevin and I have done 50, 60, 70 deals together uh, as my realtor, uh, a few of them as a partner. Um, the, some of the greatest buy and hold properties I own are a result of Kevin. And Kevin helped me get on a projection, trajectory, projection course. I don't know English. Trajectory. Uh, thank trajectory to get here. So my wife comes to me in 2014. As you guys know, you've heard this. And she said, you know, we've got to get out to California. Um, my first five years was uh, of doing Renatus was, um, was trying to make up for what all the mistakes I'd made, right, you guys? So, you know, um, trying to settle the debt on those two houses, um, settle $100,000 of credit card debt. Most of it was in my wife's name. I think all of it, the, the, the Wells Fargo card was somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 grand. We were paying 29 to 32% accelerated interest on all of our credit cards because of the economy right we never missed a payment 30 days because i didn't want to ruin my wife's credit but i was getting paid on my on my business and, and a couple of the cards i was responsible for and i would pay them after the due date and this fine print given the economy it allowed the banks to look at each other and see that i was late on a payment like not late like 30 days like ding your credit but late according to the terms of the contract of the credit cards and the credit lines. We had this business line of credit that my wife got me for my business so I could fix up this one property. And uh, it was 20 grand at 0% from, I can't remember the name of the bank, they closed. And every one of them followed suit and they jacked up the interest rate to the default rate because I was late on one card. And we were paying, uh, you guys, it was astronomical amount of interest and I'm trying to settle this. And so we spend this time, um, you know, she's, she's in a full-time job, um, which she, she took out of security purposes. She, uh, she had sold her business in 07, made a considerable amount of money on her business. Uh, unlike mine, I lost my business. <laughs> she's, she actually did it the right way and sold it during the height and uh, made some money on it. And we, we, we tore through that savings and, um, you know, we spent a lot of money when we got married. We, we, we bought our own wedding. It was a very, very elaborate wedding with 100 guests, 110 guests and, and a destination wedding. And, uh, and uh, yeah, just a long story. So um, we finally get to a point where we, a lot of our debt was paid to an extent and we were, we were doing better. Um, and uh, she was able to leave that job um, and I was making good enough money to, uh, almost support us both. And, uh, and she could pick up some per diem work. She could work part-time when she wanted in her field. She was a very good consultant and a very good, um, you know, 1099, uh, work from home and go travel and stuff like that to different, um, for different companies. I would hire her just to do certain, um, trainings for, uh, speech path. And, um, so we're moving along. She comes to my office and says, we should get this place in California. Um, we need to go out there and spend more time out there. And so, um, so we start to look in and she found this place that I'm sitting in today on Craigslist. And it was interesting because when we made the decision, um, I was flipping houses and stuff. And, and then she had a little bit of money put away that I, you know, we had gotten again, we started to put a little bit of money away again. And um, she's like, well, I'm, I'm willing to help. I'm gonna, you know, I could, we could do a flip. So my buddy Kevin found this deal on Butler, all right? It was this little simple flip and we had enough money of our own to do this. This was our very first fix and flip of our own. And I thought I'd make around 12,000 or so. It was a really simple cosmetic three bedroom, one bath flip. Um, there was some electrical we had to do and stuff and it was a piece of crap and a really bad zip code of, of Glendale. And uh, Kevin found it and we bought it and we made eight grand. So that 8,000 went towards this, uh, this property. And then um, the guy that introduced me to Renatus, okay, you guys follow me on your marketing on this, this path, you guys, because this is, this is why we're doing this. This is the potential 
of what is real, of what Renatus, what you have with Renatus. So the guy who who introduced me to Renatus put up a street sign that said real estate is seeks real estate investor seeks apprentice, and I saw it on 19th Avenue, and Deer Valley, on my way down to my loan officer job in 2007, end of 2007. And I called and I went to a meeting. I don't know, I, I blew them off. I, I can't remember, I, I couldn't make it to one meeting. And, and then I went to an intensive and it was an intensive on, on mortgages. And I thought I knew everything about mortgages. I thought it was the dumbest thing ever. And for some reason, I, I, I still uh, went to another thing. And, uh, and when I went to a Thursday night meeting is when I decided to join because I think I went to the intensive first. And, um, and that kid and I, had, uh, he'd broken away and he quit a lot of reasons. Life got in the way, he was a young married guy with two young kids and a really young in his early 20s. And um, I was probably 15 years older than he was. So I was in my late 30s, he was in his early 20s. And, um, and it was interesting in the beginning, um, we did a couple, we did a couple wholesale deals together right away, 2000, end of 2007. And then, um, and then he was supposed to be my partner in, in, in my wholesale, in my short sale business. And he, I, it's a long story, but like I was getting qualified in the marketing and in a very short period of time, I was able to not only fund my education, but but get five star qualified and make two sales. And he made almost $30,000 off me in, in a matter of like two months uh, between my education and my getting, and my getting mark, my getting my marketing, um, getting five star qualified. And, uh, and that was a lot of money for him at the time. And so his wife was very interested in spending the money and, and he was never around for the business. And I remember getting very upset with him. And uh, so anyway, we, we fell apart and he quit and he went away from, from the company for a long time. And, and he and I stayed in touch every once in a while. And, and he reached out to me, he said, Hey, I got this property. This is right around 2014. And he's like, I'm like, I'm looking. And, uh, oh no, 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 no. I found this property. I found this property. So follow me on this. And I reached out to him and I said, Eric, I got this deal. Let me know if you got a buyer, I'm going to probably flip it. But uh, if you want, I'll pay you to, to, to help me wholesale it. And I knew he was doing some wholesaling and he had some connections. Um, and sure enough, Eric found a buyer. And I was able to wholesale this property for, uh, for $21,000 more than I bought it for. And I never touched it. And so I gave him five of it and I kept 15, 16. And I added that to the eight. So I was at 23. And then... Um, my wife and I flipped another house called Georgia. And um, this neighbor that I had invited to Renatus um, came to Renatus and she didn't enroll, but she was an agent and she found Georgia for me. She found the property on Georgia. So all three of these properties that I fixed and flipped and wholesaled contributed to the down payment of this property. That's how we got the $23,000, $25,000 for this property to go down on it. And so when Sherry brought this property to me from, from Craigslist, we knew we wanted to put 25 grand down and we knew we'd have to fix it up a little bit. So we had some extra money to fix it up. Um, Sherry's credit was back to being really good. And she had some credit cards, um, again, with, 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 uh, with limit on them. And so, uh, you know, one of the things you know that we have always done is is worked on our credit the entire time right so we now have credit classes we didn't have them back then you guys i paid three different companies probably somewhere in the neighborhood of five thousand plus dollars over the course of six eight years before we um before we got renatus uh credit classes to fix our credit all the time and and months and months and years would go by and nothing would happen and, and it's crazy but I was always trying to fix the credit and get her back to the 780 scores that she was accustomed to um, when we started before I, uh, I damaged it a little bit. And, um, and so those three 
houses enabled us to put the down payment on this house. So we bought this house in 2014 um, with $25,000 down out of pocket. And we did an owner finance deal. And I know you guys know the story, but I won't, so I won't spend too much time on it. But, you know, um, it was interesting because it was the first deal we really called on and the owners tended, ended up being interested in carrying the note. And to this day, hopefully we'll see if we're going to see them this trip because of me being sick. Um, and they're, they're a little older, they're in their seventies. So, um, but they've become very good friends. of us. They're very active. They look like they're in their late fifties, early sixties. I mean, they're in incredible shape. Uh, the Mr. Bay, Mike Bay is a, is him and his entire family are hall of fame wrestlers, um, out of the Midwest. But so, uh, but they're super active people. You guys, they're in, you know, just incredible people. And, um, they still carry us on the, on the paper on this, on this property to this day. And, um, and now we're, we're here and we're in this property in this Airbnb. Um, we're fixing it up. We just changed the floors upstairs. We tore out the carpet. We've had it for six years. And uh, the property has about $300,000 of equity in it. Um, and the uh, it's rented it's rented when we leave on july 7th uh from july 7th till i think september 7th or 10th so about just over two months and the income for those two months is almost fourteen thousand dollars um and uh the cost of this property is somewhere in the neighborhood of 2900 to 3100 a month that's it and so it's been a very, very positive uh, property for us, uh, income-wise, deduction-wise, appreciation-wise, right? All of the things that why we buy real estate. And now we have an opportunity to, um, to take the property and sell it. Uh, the market is, is very strong um, in, in Arizona, as you guys know, in Utah, some of the major Colorado, California, the Northwest, um, there, there's a lot of really strong real, real estate markets. And so we're very much considering selling the property. And, and it's interesting because, you know, originally we were thinking about buying a property on the, on the beach and, and we still may do that, but I don't necessarily, I struggle buying retail, right? I don't want to buy at the same time that it's high and I don't have a lot of, uh, time and, and resources out here to find deals necessarily on the beach there. You know, it's, it's amazing. A lot of people are, you drive around, they're scraping, but we're, we're writing the entire trip off. Of course, you guys were driving around looking at property. We drove around and looked yesterday at, at some of the properties in Del Mar uh, that, are, that are little single families that you can walk to the beach within a block. You can see the beach or whatever. Um, some of the ones that overlook and then, you know, there's some other Airbnb opportunities we're looking at. Um, South Florida, um, on the west coast of Florida, east coast, uh, west coast of Florida. Um, there's some really unique property. Um, there's even a couple of, um, uh, you've heard me mention this before maybe, but um, a couple of boating, yachting opportunities that we're looking at where we could, uh, we could have a business on a, on a, on a boat, um, an Airbnb business. There's, there's just little things that we're looking at. Um, that we're not really sure 100% what we're going to do. Um, you know, we have a line of credit that we have a little bit of um, value left on. We could take the entire amount of this property and put it down on that line of credit. And then that property would be free and clear. And that property brings in 2700 a month in income, um, uh, gross income. So it would be a, a very nice chunk of change that would essentially almost pay for our entire uh, primary mortgage. Um, so there's a lot of options. And if you think about the time frame, it was only five years ago, right? Six years ago. And for me, I've been doing this now 10 years, 12 years. And, but the first five years, uh, and even six years was spent digging out of a hole, a very, very tough hole. And, and I'm not talking about the economy and I'm not, talking, I'm not blaming any of that. It, it, the crash is not why I was upside down in real estate. I mean, obviously it, it, it has a big part of it, but we were fine. 
Had I not thought that I should buy real estate like everybody else in 2007 and convinced my, my wife, which was my girlfriend at the time, to you know, use her credit to go buy the second property, you guys, that, that mortgage on that house that she bought in 06 by herself before we got together, <coughs> she was having a spec home build. One of the new construction houses she finally found, it was a quarter million dollars. And it was only uh, 1600 a month. I mean, she could have paid for that in her sleep. And um, at, with her job, you know, she has a master's degree in speech pathology. And uh, we could easily live there. We had no children, a couple dogs, and uh, we would have been fine. We would have lasted through the crash. We would both would have had, she would have had good credit. But we would have had money in the bank. And, um, and we could have bought stuff in the downturn and found a dream house for 100 grand. And life could have been completely different. It was because I was um, impulsive. I followed the trends. I was very excited about real estate, reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad, that we should rent out her property negatively, that we should jump in the real estate game immediately. We're gonna miss out. It was all of those reasons, not because the market turned. It was because I didn't know what I didn't know. And she trusted me. And it, 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 it set us back six years. And, uh, and it accompanied with all the other mistakes I made because I didn't just stop there, right? I bought two shine, I bought a timeshare. They convinced us to buy a timeshare at the end of 07, I think, or, or first part of it was just retarded. Uh, I, I felt like we needed to buy a, a, an SUV for a write-off uh, and then we should go out and spend a new new money. And, you know, she wanted this SUV. And I'm like, let's go get it. We can get it, blah, blah, blah. I'll be making all this money. <clears throat> so the good news is, is you don't have to go through that five or six years. You know, you've got a job and you've got children and you've got a life and you've got your own debt. And, and all of that makes sense, whatever that is. But the opportunity is with Renatus and what you have. Um, could start today and it may have already started for you. You don't know who you met um, in a particular meeting six months ago or four months ago before we had to go on Zoom. You don't know who you're gonna meet in Zoom, right? Um, connect and communicate and collaborate and, and meet realtors and invite people to see this information. Um, the opportunity to invite them and change their life and your life is significant. Um, and we don't know what motions it's gonna set. And we forget that. We, the day-to-day -day daily grind, the COVID, the economy, the riots, the life that's going on right now, the shutdown, the re-shutdown, it's, it's crap. You know, 2020, you could just chalk it up and complain and, and do whatever it is you wanna do with it. Or you could look at Renatus and the opportunity and say, you know what? Like of all the things in the world, uh, I've got this. Like I could, I, could, I could meet somebody today, potentially invite them to see Renatus, and maybe they've got money, you guys. And maybe they've got connections. And maybe they know somebody who's got connections or money. Maybe they know somebody who recently inherited some money or, or uh you know, they've been looking for real estate, the right group their whole life. And you change their life by inviting them and they become a friend of yours. Or maybe you go to a meeting or maybe you, you know, connect with somebody at Zoom and then that person invited somebody. And then, you know, you don't always connect with the people you invite, but sometimes you connect with people other people invited. Yeah, they're going to get paid, but you might get the connection and you might end up partnering with them. Well, we've got to be open to it. We've got to be open to the possibility of what's possible and what's probable and why Renatus works. And, you know, it's the middle of the, of the year. There's still a second half of the year. And most of the time we forget. We forget the month before, the day before, the week before, the year before. We especially forget the first half of the year. Can't even remember what happened. Especially if the second half of the year things turn around and something good happens. And so you've got the July 4th weekend coming up to have fun family time, you know, even though the world's shut down. But like, I'll tell you, I've been struggling 
the last few weeks. Being sick, I'm pissed. I'm pissed off that I got COVID. Uh, it is not pleasant. I can't believe my uh, that I would feel as bad as I did. I, I mean, I'm like, I thought you just walk around with it because I'm young and healthy, and but I'm not young apparently. <laughs> I'm like, what category am I in? But uh, but uh, you know, and then I'm mad at the fact that we haven't been around a darn community in four months and. You know, I got, I got people that were fully capable of enrolling. Friends, war market, didn't enroll. Uh, you know, had to cross some of them completely off the list. I had one of my good friends tell me this was a scam after this guy's seen me flip. He's been to my tours. I mean, this guy's a friend of mine. Trained me in the gym. Good guy. I can't think anything bad of him. I, I don't know, you know, I don't know what advice he got. I don't know who he was talking to. I don't know, you know, he looked some stuff up on the internet. And maybe he's just afraid of making changes for himself. I don't know. Um, but I'm bummed, you know, he had, a, he had a, I had an opportunity to work with him and have him join the team in a full combo and bam, gone. Like number seven or eight out of the last three months that have come all the way to the finish line and, 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 and gone the other direction, right? <clears throat> but I am out here and uh, man, I remember leaving California, uh, Arizona. And uh, I was like, if I'm going to be sick, I'm going to be sick in California because <laughs> it's beautiful. It's 70 degrees. It is, uh, it's, uh, it's a little cloudy. It's back. It's been a little chilly actually in, on the coast, but uh, we walked the beach for hours yesterday with the dogs, Evie's first time at the beach. Um, and uh, and we've got a place in California, and we got a place in Arizona, and our Airbnb. The guy in Arizona, in Tempe, young kid, and he texted me after he left after three days in Arizona. He said, "This is the best Airbnb we've ever been at." And uh, and it was interesting because the Airbnb guest the week before, uh, you know, they had a great stay and all this stuff. And then I realized, you know, either somebody got drunk and I know they had kids and pets and, uh, and they peed the bed. They peed one of the beds in the carpet. And I just, you know, I sent him a message and I said, Hey, you know, I'm going to have to bring my guy in to, to clean this, this pee. I'm asking for a couple hundred bucks. And they write me this one star horrendous review, like, like totally trashy. And they're like, this place is not as that, like just went off on me. And I was like, I'm like, I message them. I'm like, how do you sleep at night? I'm like, come on, bro. Like everything was fine. You had more people than you told me that you were going to have there. You had five kids, three dogs. You spend all this time there. And uh, hold on, I got to let the construction guys in. And they, they totally review me with this one. It just crush it. And I was just devastated. It's just, there's so much potential in what Renatus has to offer. Don't go anywhere. I, I, I don't know why. They, we have a lockbox. I don't know why he's not. I don't know why they didn't put the key in the lockbox. We're remodeling the downstairs bathroom. So we're throwing in some Carrera subway tile and we put in a brand new shower surround. And uh, yeah, so I don't know what else we're gonna do. Put in a new ceiling fan, new fixtures. I don't know, maybe we'll keep it. <laughs> Who knows? Oh, uh, you guys. So what time is it, Keely? 753. Someone wanted to know why you're going to be selling if it's making you so much money every month. Um, why we're going to sell? That is a great question. We go back and forth, but this is why. We have a ton of equity in it. And you can't keep, well, I can't say you can't. You don't always keep all your assets. Um, you know, I don't have millions of dollars in the bank yet, but. Um, we have millions of dollars of assets and, um, and some of the assets, we sell them, uh, especially when the markets are good so that we can take the money 
and go out and buy new assets that are bigger, better, better assets. So that is the plan. Um, our, our honest to God plan is, is, and we might go to Florida f- with it, or we might go to Virginia or even North Car- South Carolina maybe. Um, but California has become an interesting state, but it's still my favorite. Uh, Southern California, I just love Southern California. But the idea is to be right on the beach or like within a block, right? So we're talking about a million, um, really like the condo we could get for a million, but I really don't want a condo again. We, uh, we were interested in a little single family. So we're talking like a million two to a million to two million. Um, so we can potentially, uh, we could potentially, um, you know, have a really good down payment on a, on a house closer to the beach. And we would then Airbnb it uh, as well, but that would be our staycation um, property that we'd go to, not staycation, vacation property. And it would be right on the beach. And, you know, um, it would be with ocean views, you know, overlooking a deck. Like we were walking along the beach yesterday and, and it's just, it's night and day compared to where we're at right now. Like we're west of the five, we're, you know, we're within a mile of the beach. We can walk to the beach from here, but it takes a little longer. And our location is fantastic near all these restaurants. I mean, all kinds of stuff around here, but um, you know, we can see the ocean outside of our master bedroom upstairs, but that's it. Like, oh, there's the ocean way over there. That's it. It's not a beach house. And so we're looking for a beach house. And you know, uh, it's buy low, sell high. And, you know, we bought this house in 14. It was a good time to buy it. And um, it's probably going to be priced out right now at 700 grand. If we fix it up and sell it for 700, um, it's probably, I don't know that it's going to go. I mean, it, eventually over time, it'll go high. You know, it'll eventually reach a million, but that could be another 10 years, right? <clears throat> so that would be the reason we would sell it. Yep. And um, good question. Did I miss something else? Yeah, definitely stay positive. So, yeah, you guys, I um, the point of this is is this is that uh, the um, the best thing that we can do is every day little progress, some progress each day, and then um, and then we would remember why we're here and what we're doing. And some of the relationships that you're building and some of the the invites that you're making, you never know what it's gonna create. Like you listen to that story all the way through and I thought about this being the training it was gonna be because of where I'm in, where I'm at, doing this, delivering this training, um, is because of things that were put in motion, like essentially in 2009, right? So, cool. Yeah, Suji, buy low, sell high. I'm working on that, right? So that's why I say, you know, right now in some markets, depending on where you live, um, you can always buy low in any market. And there's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, preparing ourselves for the next down move market, whether it's 20 or 30%, it's not going to be in a recession like we did probably, right? Well, you never know with the election and all this other stuff, but who knows what the outcome is going to be of, of this whole 2020 shutdown econ- economically. But, but if you can prepare yourself with, with finance, right, with paying down debt through velocity banking strategies, with keeping more of the money you make with tax strategies, with increasing your credit, building business credit with the credit classes, if you can learn to raise private money, even if you don't get it in your bank account right now, but you start to build relationships with people with money, and then you start to prepare yourself for the classes that are gonna take advantage of in down market, like auctions and REOs and lease options, things like that, then you can prepare yourself to buy property at a, at a, at a, low, at a low time. And, and not only do we buy property just just at the low time because it's low, because the market's going down, but we also get a discount during those times as well. We create, we have an understanding of being an investor. So no matter what the retail value is at that time, as the market's crashing, you still get a discount off that retail. And so you could technically easily prepare yourself for buying property 
at the right time in the next downturn. And so one of the things that helps that is cash is king. And you've heard me say this, the opportunity to enroll students is so positive because there's so much money to be made, especially now in the new comp plan, that people have the ability to get loans from banks, the banks are lending, credit scores are higher, the economy is strong. All of these are positives for people enrolling in the education. So the more people you enroll, the more money you can make extra. And when you have extra money in the bank and you prepare yourself in all the other facets of being able to buy real estate, you may not need to flip houses and, and, and take risk. You could just buy low and then you cash flow and you manage properly and you fix up a little bit and you create a little bit of a portfolio. And then the next time it goes back up, you can pick and choose the assets you want to sell. We bought our primary residence at a discount as a flip in a, a little bit of an up market. It was still going up but it was, it was three and a half years ago, three, over three years ago. And that property has over $300,000 of equity in it in a very short period of time based on the way I bought it, the way we fixed it and the market we bought it in. You know, we're very much considering selling that right now. The Arcadia area is so, so overpriced, if you want to call it that, or it's just such high demand that it doesn't, I mean, why would we, not want to and 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 go have those those opportunities to buy later when it's low again and you buy low and you sell high and you buy low and you sell high and you constantly fix credit and you constantly bring in more cash and you constantly fix your credit and you constantly pay down debt and you constantly save on taxes and you constantly manage your portfolio and you bring in cash flowing rental properties and you hold on to those little ones and and that's how you create wealth over a very short relatively short, long period of time. All right, question. I'm interested in buying a property next door to my Airbnb property, but the price is over $100,000 than when I purchased mine for about six months ago. Mine was 235 and this new asking price is 339. I will make mine doing Airbnb, should I get it? Wow. Um, well, I think one of the things that you can remember folks when you're buying property, paying for a certain price is this. If the numbers make sense when you are renting it out and it's right next to your other one and it doesn't need a lot of fix up and you can cash flow them both through an Airbnb strategy and you can Airbnb both of them and it still cash flows, then perhaps you would buy it. Um, and it would make sense to buy it even though it's a hundred thousand more than the one you bought. You can't always buy them all and maybe the market's still going up. So maybe you buy it at 339 and you know, you could sell it at the end of the year for 400. I don't know. Uh, but if you don't want to sell it and you want to Airbnb it and it makes sense at 339, then do that. You know, um, my, my always, my thought always is, is I, I hate, I hate to pay retail for anything, the height of the market. So if it's fixed up and it's, it's a retail property, it's usually not, what I like to do. I like to buy things on, on a discount. So, um, uh, but if it makes sense for you and it's right next door, um, you know, if the one next door to me was on sale for 550, I'm not going to go buy it. Um, you know, I'm going to go look for something that is, you know, 550 half mile closer to the beach. Um, if I was looking for property, um, even though I could Airbnb the one right next door, like I do this one. Right. So that's kind of my, my, my thought. My, my current four rooms are always booked. Oh yes. It's fixed up, ready to move in. You know, I mean, if that's the case, it, it might, it might be worth it. If you can take it down and it's still going to Airbnb and you, you know, having two properties right next to each other um, is, is really a great thing. I mean, I, I bought three properties on one, on one street once uh, one from an REO, one from a guy, and one from an REO. The bank had two properties right next. I was like, well, let's buy them all because they were just right next door. And my guys could just do all the work. Um, so that that's always a nice little factor to have that opportunity. So, you know, I don't think it's terrible to pay retail if it makes sense financially for you on the Airbnb numbers that you're talking about and your rooms are always rented out and you want to have four extra rooms right next door. You know, not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. 
So I guess you really got to look at that. It's, it's, you know, it's hard for me to say, but I, I think it's not a bad idea. All right. Good to know you guys too. Um, how about a cash out refi instead of selling it? And, and you're probably right. I could do a cash out refi. Um, <clears throat> that's always possible. And, um, and it's not something I always, it's something that I always consider you guys is keeping any of the properties that, that we, we have. Um, however, if I cash out refied uh, this property, there's a problem with that. It's a non-owner occupied property. And right now, especially with COVID and the economy, um, even equity lines and cash out refis on non-owner occupied are gonna be pretty low. So 700,000 times 30% loan to value, 70 cents on the dollar is 30 times 700 is three times seven is 210,000. So of the $300,000 of equity, 210 wouldn't even be allowed out of the company, of the, of the property, right? I would only be able to pull out a little bit of the cash um, because the banks won't allow me to leverage my rental property that high. Does that make sense? So um, that's why the 1031 exchange is such a powerful tool because you can move your entire equity into a new property tax deferred and you get it all. Um, on a primary residence, well, it depends right now, They're, they've limited, but typically you, you know, in the past I was able to get a 95% loan to value on my home equity line of credit, up to 95% of the value of my primary residence and then you'd move after that. So you can tap into a lot more of your equity. So I may consider that on my Earl property, my primary residence and pull the money out um, and then go and then keep the property in, in Airbnb it, um, which we might do as well. It's a very big house and um, five bedrooms, three baths, and, and uh, we'd put in a pool and we'd really, uh, we'd really deck the heck out of it and, um, and, and maybe you know get 800 a night for that thing or something. But, uh, but um, it, would, it would take some money to do that. So, so those are some options there, but yeah, you don't get that, you don't get that great option on your rental properties if you don't have a ton of equity. Uh, I mean, even, I mean, I mean, a I have a ton of equity kind of, I mean, in a, in a relatively cash number, but I don't have a big percentage of equity. Like I'm not down to 30 or 40% where I can pull out a bunch of cash on a cash out refi or even a uh, home equity line of credit on a, on a, on a non-owner because they only go up to 70 or 75% loan to value. And you got to remember, you know, for every hundred thousand dollars, you guys that I make, my wife and I make, we pay about eight, eight to eighty five hundred dollars in tax. So um, our tax liability is pretty low, and which means that our AGI, our adjusted gross income, is significantly lower than um, than our 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 overall income. And so um, we also don't have. Um, a ton of cash reserves. We have a multitude of properties in both our names and in multiple entity structures. And qualifying for loans in today's market as an entrepreneur, as a real estate investor, uh, is not an easy task at all. And so um, we're constantly under the gun with reserves, uh, debt to income, and, um, and credit. So my wife's credit's much better than mine and mine fluctuates. I use my credit constantly. So my fluctuates sometimes as low as 680 and a lot of times goes up to 740 on any given time, depending on how much credit I'm using. So it's a constant battle when we're trying to uh, purchase a property. And so a lot of times, or refinance a property. So a lot of times we get in a position where we have to pay a higher interest rate in order to get the loan program that will allow us to be a little more lenient on our borrowing capabilities if that makes sense. So it's not just as easy as a normal cash out refi or a home equity line of credit. There's a lot that goes into it. And it's, you guys, there's nothing I dread more than putting all my paperwork together to try to get a loan. 14 or 15 different uh, insurance <laughs> uh, declarations, a ton of tax papers, all my mortgage statements. It is a, an absolute nightmare. Updated bank statements on about nine different bank accounts. It's, it's just a pain in the butt. But, all right, you guys are awesome. Those are good ideas though. I'm glad everybody is thinking crazily out of the box and always thinking of multiple exit strategies, multiple ways to take advantage. 
And if you all would just every day get through this 4th of July, look at the opportunity ahead for the next six months, get reinvigorated and reinvite and regroup and spend time asking people to see Renatus. The, what's it called, Keely? The trajectory, the trajection? Trajectory, you got it. Perfect. <laughs> of your life could be amazing and will be amazing on things you don't even know that it could be set in motion. And you'll look back and you'll remember the chain of events and you'll go, wow, it's because in 2009, I sat next to Kevin Langan at a Bob Snyder event. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful for that. Bill, I've got a quick question. I know we're past time. Cool. But just real quick, do you feel like the eight or nine people that have said no, who have the money, um, do you feel like they said no because of COVID? Um, that's a great question. I think that there's definitely a few of them that did. They said no because of what's going on. They're very, they're very uncertain. Um, I think John, for example, said no because he's uncertain of himself, um, which is, is, is surprising to me. Uh, how, how he can let that, uh, that part of it um, creep into his mindset. I, I don't know if it was just an excuse. Um, uh, I would just say a couple of them were COVID. I would say uh, five, five of them in particular, uh, I don't have my whiteboard in front of me, but um, they had specific reasons that really had nothing to do with COVID and they were objections I didn't overcome. They were including John with, with what he, you know, the research he said and called it a scam, um, including Kate, uh, whose husband um, and her do not see eye to eye on, 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 um, on investing in themselves and investing in rental property. Um, and then, um, so a couple others uh, who had their own specific reasons. So there's a few of them that I'm gonna, that hopefully I'll see soon again. Um, and then a couple of them that I think are gonna wait it out. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're definitely fearful of, of the future. Thank you. Yep. yep. All right, folks. Well, I'm gonna put my number back in there. It's called Highway. Thanks again, Bill. It helps me listening to what others have to overcome. Perfect, you're welcome, Bobby. <clears throat> Just checking in, making sure I missed, I, I don't know if I missed something from you, Billy. Shoot me a text. I'll put this in here. Oops, I gotta go to everybody. Um, there we go. You're welcome, Deb, Doug and Debbie, 760. It's so much a pleasure to have everybody on the call. 533. There we go. Sorry about the background noise. Um, I appreciate everybody being here today and uh, make it a great Tuesday. I'm feeling really good. Uh, going to go walk the dogs and uh, take them out to the park and uh, have a great day. I'm going to have a margarita somewhere near the beach and think of all you guys. And I'll see you tomorrow night or tomorrow morning on the call. Thanks, Keely. Bye, everybody. Thank you, folks. I will feel better. I feel better today. Thanks for being here. You guys made me all feel better. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys are amazing, and I will talk to you soon.